In this video, we're going to take a look at subject, replace subject, behavior subject, and async subject, as well as the difference between those ones. And hopefully that we can clear out some confusions because there are a lot of developers that are got those uh, subjects confused in RxJS. So hopefully this video will clear out those confusions. Now, if you haven't checked out my previous video called Top top RxJS operators, I will highly recommend to check it out. So the first one that we're going to go over is called subject. So subject is a observable that can also be multi, uh, multicast to all the observables or subscribers that are subs uh, subscribed to this observable. But one thing that subject can do is that it can be able to trigger or emit a value. So here we, we have an example called um, this method called set data, we pass in this value in number, and then we basically say this dot data dot nest, which we pass in the value. And this value will basically multicast to all the subscribers that are subscribing to this uh, observable. So here, let's take a look at example in subject component. Basically, subject component, we have constructor, we bring in the sub subject ser service. And then basically have a property called data, which is type number. And then in the ng on init, what we did was we basically emit the value two to all the subscribers. And then in this subscribe, basically we basically get data, but it doesn't get the current value. So that's the downfall of the subject, which, which we will take a look at later. But here, what you can see is that we have a button. When we click, we trigger the send data function. And then basically emits a random number. OK, so now if we go to the screen, if I refresh, you see nothing. Why? Because like I said earlier, it doesn't get the current value. So it doesn't capture, it doesn't store the current value. So you can see here, we emit value 2, but we didn't, but we, but when we subscribe to it, we don't get it. But however, if we subscribe before the dot, uh, before the value is emitted, we will get a value too. Okay. So basically, it doesn't store the value. Basically, when it like emit the value, it just send out to all the subscribers. Okay. So now let's go back and then where this is not really useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button. Okay, and then we're going to check to see if it actually emits a value. So when it emits a value, basically it's just a math.random, so a random number. So you can see we get a every uh, we get a random number every time we uh, click with the button. And when we click with the button, it basically called this send data function, uh, send data method, and basically it tr uh, it basically emits a random number, and then so, and then basically published to all the subscriber who are subscribed to this um, this observable. So now, what if we want to capture, like what if we want to store that data in our uh, in our subject? So like, like here you can see we're trying to emit this value. How can we be able to catch this value? How can we be able to get the value that are stored inside this subject? So what we can do instead is we can use a behavior subject. So this behavior subject, it works a little different compared to this, uh, the, the traditional subject. So what it does, so you can see we still have, uh, let's see, try to go down. So you can see we still have everything that are very similar to what we have in subject. So we have a component and then here we have data property ng on init. We basically emit this value too. And we also, I believe we also have the button. I guess we don't have the button in this case. So let's just copy this. So basically what I'm trying to say is that everything that's the same in the behavior subject component, except that we're using behavior subject service, which is from here. And here you can see we have a behavior subject and is required to have an initial value. So in this case, we're going to put a hundred in this case. So that's going to be initial value. And what's going to happen is that first you can see that when we bring this 
service in the constructor first we store the value 100 inside this observable and then we emit a new value to this observable so now the uh, the property data the value of this observable is going to be 2 right and then we we basically store that value inside this observable and then now we can be able to store the data and when we subscribe it we can get the current value and this data is equal to e which is uh, the value that we emit which is 2 and now uh, we just have to change this um, to this okay so now we should have a 2 right so we should have a 2 because we emit 2 here and then we subscribe to it and we say this that data is equal to e and then if we send if we click on this button it will send it will basically get uh, emit a new value so you can see we have a new value a new value so that's not really important what's important is that it can be able to get the current value for the behavior subject so that's the difference between behavior subject and the subject so now I want to talk a little more about replay subject so replay subject is kind of similar to behavior subject where you can store data but you can actually store um, numbers of data so you can say oh I want to store the last two values I want to store the last 10 values or I want to store the last 11 values so we can be able to uh, customize we can be able to set a length of how many values we want to we want to store and we also can be able to say how long we want to store that value but we, we're not going to get into like how long but we're basically just going to get into like you can be able to store um, numbers of values in this observable so here in this case we're going to store the last two values and then in the replay subject component uh, what happened is we have this our subject service so basically replay subject service basically emit those values right and we subscribe to it and what's going to happen is that every time we emit a value like we basically subscribe to those value and we basically push that value to the data property and then this data property going to display it in the in the client so let's try to okay so let's try to display that so you can see we have 50 and 5 why because those are the two last values that are emitted so now if we want to change the three so it's going to be the last three values we're going to have the last three values okay so this is how you use a uh, replay subject so now I just want to talk a little more about async subjects so async subject is very very similar to subject where it doesn't hold a value and basically what happened is that it only only the last value that are sent to that are emitted will be sent to the subscribers when the execution is completed so basically there will be a method called complete that you call when you want to complete this execution and here you can see we have a data that is a async subject observable so what will happen is that we have this service and we have this property and inside this async subject component we bring the service in we have a property called data we basically what's going to happen is we try to emit 12 and then because it doesn't hold the current value so we don't we don't get it so now what's going to happen is we subscribe to this uh, data property from the sub async subject service and then what's going to happen is we emit those values and then the last one will be sent will be emitted to its subscribers and then now we hit complete basically that value will be sent to um, to all the subscribers so if we let's see So now if we try to bring that in okay, let's try to bring that in
we've got a 2, okay? And now if we try to comment this out, we won't be able to get anything. Yeah, we won't be able to get anything because we didn't hit complete. So we need to hit complete before the value is going to send to all the subscribers that subscribe to this observable. So in this case, we get 2. And then if we uh, delete any value, we still get 2. And if we change this to 3, because this is the last value, right? So we get the last value. Okay, so this is the difference between async subject, behavior subject, replay, and subject. So hopefully you know those four subjects are. And if you don't, here's a quick summary. So basically, uh, only so for subject, only upcoming values will be received by the subscribers. So for each net subscribers, okay? And then the behavior subject, it can only be received so the, the subscribers can only receive the previous one value and the upcoming values. Replay subject, you can uh, get the previous values, all the previous values, as well as the upcoming values, but you have to set how many previous values you want. Okay, and then there's also async subject, basically get the latest value when the stream will be closed. So when we hit the complete method, this, uh, this stream will be closed.